<laughs> oh, this, this is something new and fun and exciting. This is the Dominator from Worker. It is their newest blaster shell. It is uh, a step above from the Swordfish. Now, there's a lot of things to talk about here, and this is not a comprehensive review. I have had this for three days, four days, something like that, uh, when I'm filming this, and I just wanted to get some initial early impressions out after wiring it up, sending some shots through the chronograph, and getting to test things like the Double Stack Magazine. Let's go ahead and actually start with the Double Stack Mag. This is something that I didn't think we would ever actually see. Uh, people have tried and we've always kind of been stuck with the magwell that Hasbro gave us. So all of the attempts would be based around trying to feed multiple darts into a then smaller space where things would bind up and and essentially just not function properly. So any attempts before they really got off the ground would be stymied by that issue. So Worker just went ahead and got around that by creating a larger magwell. And uh, the magazine's feed lips have a staggered slot here, so darts start one slow, one lower, one higher, which helps them stack properly. And while I have not tested with heavily worn darts, I have tested with lightly worn darts, lightly used darts. And they've worked so far. I haven't put it through a stress test of a game or anything like that yet, but initially it has been working. Uh, I've been using AccuFakes and Mengun darts so far. Now, I have seen images from Mr. Nathan, who has had issues with his uh, not wanting to feed the worn, heavily worn darts as well or at all, seeing them kind of get stuck together and mushed up and all that stuff. So that is a bit of a bummer that more worn darts seem to be an issue, but it's not too terribly surprising, unfortunately, given the method they're using here. Still, very exciting, very cool, something I am very excited about trying in games because if these do work in games under heavy use circumstances and situations, it'll be really fun to have 40 plus darts in a single mag. Now, Worker says you can put up to 46 darts in this, but they recommend only going to 40 uh, as more squish on the darts and pressure and all that. So I'm not gonna fill it over 40. I, I tend to just go with whatever's recommended, but being able to carry that many darts in a small space that's actually not that much thicker than a standard magazine is pretty enticing, to be honest. So something to look out for. Uh, as we get more time to test with these. But if you don't want to use these double stack magazines, there are actually inserts that you can place inside the magwell that will allow you to use regular magazines. So they thought ahead to what a lot of people will likely be doing because you already have stashes of magazines and things you like to use. So you can pop those in and use your regular mags, which is awesome. A really nice, really important touch, I think, that I'm glad Worker has done. Now, talking about the blaster shell itself, I love this shell. Um, I think this shell is amazing. It feels fantastic in the hand. I love the Picatinny all across the top. On the bottom, if you want a grip, if you want a light, plenty of space for my cameras and other mounts and stuff like that. Um, the grip feels nice in my hand, it's comfortable, things are placed well, even though there's not really much contouring or shaping here on the grip, it still feels good in my hand, which again, I have long fingers and a relatively large hand, so it's nice to me. Uh, the aesthetics on the outside, the deco, actually is pretty nice. They've done away with the fish theme. Uh, no more scales down here on the grip, no more fish on the side. It looks much more sci-fi. And this shell is begging, begging for a paint job. So it's gonna get one. I cannot wait to paint this blaster uh, once I'm all done with testing and, and all of that good stuff. And there's actually another reason I'll get into in a little bit here as to why I wanna paint this shell, aside from just how nice it will look when it is painted. Um, but 
it utilizes what appear to be the same internals for trigger, rev trigger, pusher, and all of that as the swordfish. So you should be able to swap those in and out. I actually tried to put my uh, Bigs and Z swordfish parts in here. And while they did work, there was some binding issues, things getting caught. Uh, so there may be uh, tighter tolerances on the internals of this in terms of what you need as opposed to the swordfish, but that's something I'll test out more in the future when I have more time to do so. Uh, just an interesting thought, if you like the clear shell and want some color matching parts, Biggs and Z may be able to hook you up for this as well as the swordfish, which is awesome because that means they'll be more easily attainable if the mold is already done. But I'm getting on a tangent here. One thing I don't like about this shell, however, the handguard. Not a fan of handguards. Um, they get in the way of the mag, and while you can argue that it allows you to kind of use it as a guide to feed in, it also makes it harder to get out. I, if you like to grip around the mag, you're limited in that. The handguard gets in the way. Uh, so that's a bit of a bummer in my perspective, and when I paint this, the handguard's coming off. I'm going to jumble this off, jumble this off down here, you know, fill that gap, and then have a nice, nice looking shell, you know, minus that handguard there that I don't like. Um, now, something that you've probably been looking at that I haven't addressed yet is there's two flywheel cages in here currently. This shell accommodates up to three flywheel setups, and I love that. It's to me, it's fantastic that they went ahead and they just went off the deep end and said, yeah, let's allow people multi-stage setups right off the bat. They don't need to adjust or kind of create their own screw ports to set cages into and things like that. I love it. I love the idea. I love that they did it. Uh, there are some things that are potential downsides for it. Uh, number one being the battery tray. It's the same battery tray as the Swordfish or a Strife or anything similar. It's very small. And if you're powering three flywheel cages, and they also offer these with full auto kits with uh, controllable speed settings uh, or dials to be able to change your rate of fire and motor speed, that's a lot to be powering in a battery that they want to fit in here. That's not realistically going to happen. So I've got my... Uh, Bolt 1800 milliamp 65 to 130C uh, battery that I've been using in my foam technician battery stock, which if you don't have a battery stock and you aren't using them, I, I can't recommend them more than enough. But that's a topic for another time, it, though it is relatable because I feel it is necessary for this blaster. You need someplace else to put your battery because you're going to need a beefy one if you're running three stages, which I initially was. Um, I tested out three stages, and while it functions and it works, I don't have the proper cages, motors, and flywheel setups to really take advantage of it. Um, so the FPS readings were not all that impressive for what I was running because they weren't the right things. So I will be picking up some proper uh, cages, wheels, motors, all of that for a nice three-stage setup because I want this to sing and just do delightfully stupid things. Uh, but with that said, there are some issues with wiring things up. While there are some things I like, namely, you know, that there's a nice wire channel up here for things to go in um, and, and kind of keep things separated, they want you to wire things directly to each other to each stage. So they're all set in and you can't remove anything or anything like that, which... I get, but it would have been nice had they accommodated people that wanted to be able to swap things in and out, which I very much like to do. Now you may be able to see, I'm also, I took some close up footage, so I'll probably put that up here, that I have done removable cages on all three stages here. So I can run from one to three stages whenever I want just by popping cages in and out uh, via Dean's connectors. Now, this took some work, unfortunately. I was really hoping that this space up here was going to be enough to run all of the connectors and wires through. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Uh, so after dremeling a bunch of stuff out here and kind of 
uglying up the shell because you can see all the, the marring and the, the scratches and stuff from the Dremel. I realized there just wasn't enough space. So I had to kind of, I don't know the right word. It, it was a lot of measuring and marking and kind of finding the spots where I could fold connectors and wires up. And so the connectors are next to the motors and it, it basically was more complicated than it needed to be. So that's one of my downsides where if you do want to run multi-stage here and you want things to be swappable, say you, you know, don't want to have to invest in a whole bunch of different cages and whatnot, and you want to be able to pull things out and put them in other blasters, that kind of thing, that's something to consider. It will be a little bit more work. You'll have to dremel some things out to accommodate uh, channels for wiring and connectors and things will, you'll, you'll want to take a look at everything you'll need to do before you start because it will take you a little bit more effort than it would if you just wanted to wire things up standard, not switchable, nothing like that. So keep that all in mind, but it is really nice, I gotta say, to be able to just go from three cages to two cages and just pop them in the shell, pull one out, close it back up, and, uh, and it's good to go. That absolutely is awesome. So one more thing to touch on for the multi-stage setups is a downside here is if you are only running one stage or two stages, you've got faux barrel to deal with and a pretty decent amount of faux barrel to deal with. This is how much I have for two stages. And if you're three stages, you're even more than that. So you're gonna get some relatively decent barrel drag. Uh, and on a single stage, that's a bit of a bummer, especially since if you are using the double stack mag, you need to use one of the worker flywheel cages as your first stage. And right now, the only two Gen 3 flywheel cages from worker that accommodate this are a 43.5 millimeter flat and the worker canted cage for Gen 3. Now, the way that this accommodates the double stack mag is it has a wider aperture uh, for the darts to enter in, so it kind of guides the dart into the flywheels rather than just pushing it straight forward and assuming that the dart is going to be on track because the mag is single stacked. So there's something you're gonna have to give up for now. I'm sure that relatively soon, I would hope we'll see like Open Flywheel Project and some other people uh, adjust cages to mimic that widened entry uh, funnel, I guess we'll call it, into the flywheel cage to actually shoot the dart. So that's something, again, you're gonna have to consider for now. Hopefully the community will remedy this relatively soon as these blasters get into people's hands. Now, Worker did send this to me, I believe, as I mentioned earlier, but um, I wanted to get as much information out to you as quickly as possible. I got this on Friday, wired it up on Saturday, messed around with it on Sunday, a bit more today on Monday, and now I'm filming, hopefully to get this out to you soon so you can be informed and have at least some initial impressions from someone that's gotten to try multiple stages in this blaster. Uh, I have not gotten to try the uh, auto kit yet. I wanted to make sure I had the multiple stages because that to me was more important than the uh, full auto setup, but I will be doing various uh, setups, multiple builds actually with this blaster. So this is not the last video for this. This is the first video of probably a few. Uh, I've got things planned for this blaster. I'm very excited about it and cannot wait to do more with it. So uh, with that said, I, I think that's where I get to leave this for now. There's a lot to talk about this and it's possible I missed some things, but again, this is not the last video. This is just my early impressions to let you all know about this blaster. If you're thinking about picking one up, so far, I really like it. I'm looking forward to using it, but there are some downsides. So be aware of that. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you're gonna pick one up. Let me know what you think about double stack mags, about multi-stage setups, all of it. Let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from all of you. And if you are new to the channel, enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.